Well, last night at seven o'clock, I received a phone call telling me to expect a delivery of solar panels this morning between 8 and 8.30. So last night I was out clearing some snow frantically trying to make some space for the pallet. So in this video we are going to be receiving that pallet and we're going to be doing some initial preparations for our solar panels. Do you, do you want to do that, Anthony? No. Anthony, that's all I can do with it. Really? I can't get any further. Hey, Anthony, that's all I can do with it. All right, okay. Thank you, Paul. Anthony, thank you very kindly for the help. Okay, no problem. Okay. Well, here it is. It's, uh, it was a lot of effort to try and get it down here, that's for sure. Um, he couldn't get it any further down there. Um, this, the ice was just uh, too much for him. Uh, but we can get our car in and out, so this is, this is manageable. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, rewinding to yesterday and we're going to be uh, uh, going back to the preparations which I have and then we'll come back to these uh, and uh, we will start doing our work. So we are going to be mounting solar panels on these. Uh, as you can see, this is leaning. So we're going to be doing some basic preparations. We need to uh, lift up this uh, fence post and we need to reset it so that it's uh, uh, sitting plumb. We shouldn't have any warping between the fence posts because of course that adds pressure to the solar panels amongst other reasons. So last time I was uh, doing this, I was using my drill driver. I've now got an impact driver and it's much better, but I've still got screw heads which are snapping, but it does make a difference. There are fewer screw heads snapping, which is great. So these should just simply drop out now. I've removed all the screws. I think the ice has been holding them up. Now anyone who's taken apart a fence which is held together by screws will understand how swearing was invented. In theory, all you have to do is get a screwdriver and undo the screws. But the fact of the matter is, is that these screws have been in place for 13 years and you discover that um, if the head hasn't been stripped out, uh, then you've probably snapped the head of the screw um, or at least you'll find that most of the screws come out but the last 25% of the screws don't. At that point you uh, resort to wrenching the thing apart uh, in order to uh, get the panels off and then you're left with stubs of uh, a screw shaft uh, left buried into the joist and then you have to get your hacksaw out and the whole job just gets amplified in terms of quantity and in terms of frustration. There's always one, isn't there? <laughs> it's a universal rule of uh, removing screws, especially ones which are 13 years old. There's always one that's going to be coming out. So it's a bit of a devil. <laughs> right, let's uh, try and lever this thing out. Right. Yep, that's well and truly embedded stripped head. I've got a tool for that but I'll deal with that later. So these post intervals are 183 centimeters. Solar panels are 176 so that means we've got seven centimeters of uh, spare leeway either side. Now we've got the worst job and removing that post and then re, uh, resetting it so that it's vertical. Now, dealing with the elements of the fence which are above the ground is fairly easy, but when it comes to posts, and in particular removing posts, um, they've always caused a fear of dread in me. The amount of manual handling, uh, groundwork in awkward postures is terrible. This post uh, used to be rotted away and getting the concrete uh, block out of the ground previously uh, which held that post in uh, was a devil's job. Uh, I did it about a year and a half ago and I was successful with the use of this farm jack. 
um, but it was extremely heavy. I replaced it with a steel spike uh, because at the very least steel spikes are easy to apply theoretically and uh, easier to remove and that was the case today and um, but getting the steel spike back in was uh, definitely a hammering job and uh, that was very exhausting. I'm not a big fan of groundworks that's for sure. Right let's take a look here There we are. That is pretty much plum. And then we'll just have a look here. It'll bend from side to side a little bit, but I think that's pretty good. So the design of a solar fence is very basic indeed. You've just got two fence posts and then you've got two fence joists linking those fence posts together and then they provide the support for your solar panel. We're going to be talking about how your solar panels are restrained by these fence joists but I'm sure there are even simpler fence solutions out there where you just simply mount them between the fence posts but I don't favor that simply because getting your fence posts aligned is a skill and you'd need to be very precise about that kind of uh, maneuver. Okay, so that's the joists all done. Let's go and take a look. Okay, so this is still pretty level. If we take a, a look back, I think this is looking okay. So, a uh, couple of details. You will notice this joist is flush with the front of the upright of the fence post. And this one is flush with the back. The idea is that the solar panel is resting its weight on this bottom joist, but then it is restrained with this joist. Now I'm going to put more screws in uh, nearer the time of the solar panels, especially for the bottom joist. It's important that the bottom joist uh, takes the weight, um, but on the top joist, we're gonna have some uh, hangers. And I'm gonna show you that in a bit more detail later on. So what I've done is I've applied the, uh, the wood planer to strim off uh, a layer 2.6 millimeters and that allows a gap for the flange on the solar panel to uh, sit. So the idea is to, to put it here and then the solar panel should, uh, should sit nice and uh, uh, snug inside here. So you can see here, we've got a gap along here and that's where the flange can drop in. And then same again, just there. Okay, let's get this opened up. So I think this is very interesting. So I think what we can do is take the first solar panel away with us. So we've got some minor height adjustments to do, but I think we've got the general principle right. This is now resting on the bottom joist. And if I pull here, it's uh, solid against the top joist. So I'm very pleased with that. So we're going to deal with the next one. And then uh, one of the things 
I did in terms of mistakes and yes there are mistakes you can see that it's not as plain on the left as it is on the right so I'm going to sort that out well it's the next day and I've been working on the brackets for the bottom solar mounts now I wasn't too happy with what I made last night in the failing light in a hurry um, so what I've done is I've uh, taken them to pieces and I've created this. This is uh, the notch which I am going to be putting in place. Okay, so one of the things you'll notice is that the back of the solar panel is not flush with the back here. So we're going to pull this back like so. And then we slot these over. And they sit like this, basically. Uh, we move this uh, as far over as we can. And then it is time to uh, screw these in. Okay, so that is the new mounting position. So this is what I came up with last night. I wanted the front of the solar panel to be uh, flush with the front of the uh, fence joist um, but it looks ugly. Um, there's a lot of material here um, which is unnecessary um, so we're going to remove that. Um, it does mean that the front of the fence joist uh, solar panel is not flush with the fence joist at the front anymore but, and it points down ever so slightly, but I don't think that's going to matter in the grand scheme of things. The one other thing to note is that uh, these cables, they're going to uh, link up here. Always a good idea to make sure your female and male uh, connectors are lined up. Um, there's 1,200 millimeters of length on these uh, cables. It doesn't quite look like it, but uh, I am assured by the data sheet that it is. So it shall reach. Um, my inclination is to pass it around the front of the fence post rather than the back. And the reason for that is simply because the back is in public space. Yeah, I could drill a hole through, through the fence post as well. That's another option. Okay, so now it's time to cut the cladding board down to length. Well, this is pretty much all the woodwork done now. So let's take a closer look. So round the back, it looks just like the fence that there was beforehand. I've joined the two solar panels together and the MC4 connector is over there. I'll clean that up later. Um, and then I've got the MC4 connectors popping underneath here um, and over there. Now, the MC4 connector is protected by the, uh, by the wooden cladding. Um, it's also clipped at the back. Uh, what we're gonna do is have some conduit here. Uh, I'm gonna put some waterproof covers on the MC4 connectors before it starts raining because although the MC4 connectors themselves are waterproof, they're only waterproof when connected. So, not bad. And I have to say, I think it looks reasonably uh, smart as it, uh, if I do say so myself. Now, yesterday when this uh, pallet full of uh, solar panels came uh, trundling down my driveway, it uh, struck me that uh, I'd committed to something quite a lot more substantial than what I had in my head. Um, the weight of that thing is probably about 345 kilos with all of the solar panels in it. And I was uh, 
quite able to walk up the uh, the driveway but when it came to uh, uh, steadying the the, the pallet as uh, it was coming down it was a bit icy um, I, I was skidding and so was the uh, uh, pallet driver as well um, he had to sort of lower the pallet onto the ground to use it as a brake um, and yeah I felt a bit stressed with it being placed there um, to, to be honest um, and Really, if I assess it on a rational basis, there's nothing to be stressed about. I just have to take my time. The solar panel fences at the back, that took about three days in total, maybe. And when I say three days, I don't mean three entire days. I'm talking maybe about three or four hours per day. But um, now I'm going to take uh, a small break because I need to do some preparations for the shed. I need to prepare those uh, adapters and that is going to be the subject of the next video. Um, and I also, I'm going to say the, 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 the cause of biggest anxiety for me is going to be the battery when it comes along. 230 kilos is an enormous weight to be handling. And if that's uh, 100 kilos more, it, it gave me an idea of what it was and it also reminded me of how fragile my back is. I mean, I didn't hurt my back in any uh, sense of the way, I didn't apply any load, but just simply posture alone without even lifting anything, it makes my back feel sore. Um, I've got some thoughts and designs about how to handle things with the, with the battery. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, using a, a lever operated lifting hoist for moving it just as a pulling aid um, and probably I'm going to be using my trolley jack as well um, just to get it off the pallet amongst other reasons if I can stick a plank of wood underneath the battery lift the battery up on the plank of wood with the trolley jack and then remove the pallet that's probably going to be um, uh, one way of doing it the other thought I've been thinking about when it came to anchor points All cars have got a tow hook and they're of course rated to pull the car along onto a, a tow truck um, but only in the axial direction um, and I can't get my car lined up with the steps to use my car as an anchor point so um, it's gonna have to be the hedge it's gonna have to be the hedge and if not the hedge then the fence post behind um, some of those routes have got a decent quantity of girth on them and the lateral load uh, lowering that uh, lowering that battery down the steps is going to be about 100 kilos so that's something we're going to uh, explore in another video it's getting exciting and I have to say at this stage I feel more confident but the next stage with the shed needs to be done in a day because I, I don't really want the shed exposed to the outdoor elements for any longer than a, a day. Um, we do get plenty of precipitation and certainly this snow has not melted and it's added a lot of complexity in terms of where to put that. Um, I had to snub all that show, uh, snow the night before and um, I really don't, I, I'm done with shoveling to be honest, but I believe there might be another beast from the east coming on later on in the, in the month. So in the meantime, I'd like to thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you again very soon.